Welcome to this course about the basic understanding of weather. I'm meteorologist Dan Schreiber and I'm confident by the end of this short course you're going to know a little bit more about weather and how it impacts our daily life and how to prepare for it in the future. The first thing that we need to understand about weather is that if the sun didn't shine and the earth wasn't curved then we wouldn't have weather. Why is that? Well because Number one, with the curved earth, it allows the sun to shine at different angles and at different places at the same time. It's daytime one place, it's nighttime another place. The sun may be shining directly at the equator, but more indirectly at the North Pole. Uh, and everywhere in between. The sun shines differently at different angles, which causes different types of heating. The other thing is is that water and land and just about every element out there absorbs and reflects heat a little bit differently. So for instance, say you go to the beach and the ocean water is 70 degrees, but outside the air temperature is 95 degrees. You park your car at the beach, you go for a dip, and it's a little bit cool, it's refreshing, it's 70, 70 degree water. You go back to your car, you touch your car, you burn your hand. Why? Well, it's because the water absorbs a lot more heat but at a slower rate. So that's why it's a little bit cooler. It hasn't had time to get up to 90 degrees today. It probably will take months. It may never get to 90 degrees just because the absorption of the heat that water provides. Your car, on the other hand, the middle in your car, it uh, can absorb heat very, very quickly. Okay, so your your car is going to heat up, the surface of your car is going to heat up a lot faster. It's also going to lose that heat a lot faster than the ocean water will. Okay, so the sun is shining at different angles everywhere, and it is heating different objects everywhere, which means that different objects are going to be of different temperatures. This difference in the temperatures creates a difference in pressure okay think air pressure right now it's like if you take two pots of water okay you fill them up they're identical pots you take two pots you fill them up with the same amount of water and you put one on the stove and turn the stove on and you keep the other one there next to the stove on the countertop which one is going to have higher pressure as time goes on well, of course, the, the one that you put on the stove and you turn the stove on, right? Because you're introducing heat and the pressure is going to be going up inside that pot. The one that's sitting on the countertop is probably not going to see much of any change of pressure, okay? But there all of a sudden is going to be a pressure difference between the two pots, the one that's on the stove cooking and the one that's sitting on the side. There's going to be a pressure difference, okay? So just like there's a pressure difference between a pot sitting on the stove with the heat on and a pot sitting on the countertop, just because there's going to be a pressure difference between those two, the same thing happens anywhere in, on planet Earth. So we'll go back to our scenario of parking your car at the beach and the ocean water is 70 degrees and the air temperature is 90 degrees. Okay. Well, we've got two different temperatures very close to each other. The atmosphere is going to want to equalize. How does the atmosphere equalize? It doesn't like the fact that there is two different temperatures right next to each other. If there's two different temperatures right next to each other, that means there's two different pressures right next to each other and the atmosphere just wants everything to be equal. It's kind of like the basketball that has a hole in it, okay? If the basketball has a hole in it, which way does the air flow out of the hole, right? It doesn't go into the basketball. That would be useful, okay? Especially if you had a flat tire, had a hole in it, and air flowed into the flat tire, but that's not what happens. Air flows from the higher pressure, which is in the enclosed volume, to the lower pressure, okay? Same thing happens. First thing in the morning when you go to the beach, the wind is probably going to be kind of calm, light. There's not going to be too much difference because the air temperature and the water temperature are probably very similar. But in the afternoon when you go to the beach, the sun has been shining for a while, so the land is heated up, but the water's remained about the same. And all of a sudden it gets a little bit breezier. You get an onshore flow of wind because the pressure difference has increased. Okay. There is all of a sudden lower pressure on the beach where it's gotten hotter and higher pressure out over the water where it's a little bit cooler. And the atmosphere is just trying to equalize. 
Well, this difference in the pressures, it's called the pressure gradient force. Just like the force of gravity or the Coriolis force, it's a force of nature. We see it as wind. Okay, the pressure gradient force is viewed as wind, okay? Because the stronger the difference between the two pressures, the stronger the wind. Let's go back to your basketball scenario. If you got a hole in your basketball and it's just a little hole, it is probably gonna come out of that hole rather slowly. Let's say you sit there and you squeeze that basketball though as hard as you can. The air is gonna come out a little bit faster. Why does that happen? Well, you're, you're exerting more pressure. You're making the pressure inside the basketball higher, and therefore it's going to come out faster to the lower pressure that's outside of the basketball, okay? So this pressure gradient force, this difference between the two pressures creates wind. The stronger the pressure gradient, the, the, the stronger the difference between the two pressures, the stronger the wind can become. Wind drives weather, right? It, it, it's used as a mechanism for bringing moisture and humidity in. It's used as a mechanism for bringing colder temperatures in or sometimes warmer temperatures in. It pushes moisture around. It pushes clouds around. It creates weather, okay? Weather is created because of the difference in pressure, which is created because the difference in temperature, which is created because the earth is round, the sun shines, and there's so many different elements out there that heat and cool differently because that happens. Now we've all heard of high pressure and low pressure in the atmosphere. You look at a weather map and it's full of a bunch of H's and L's. H for high, L for low. What is high pressure? What is low pressure? Well. Come to find out it's all actually very relative, okay? But what's most important, what we've got to understand to understand weather, is that if you look at a surface weather map and you see a low pressure, an L, that means over that area in the northern hemisphere, the wind is gonna be flowing counterclockwise around it, okay? And in the vertical, that air is going to be lifting. All right, low pressure means lifting. The air is gonna flow counterclockwise around it at the surface. The high pressure means that the air is sinking in the air and therefore is going to be flowing clockwise around it in the Northern Hemisphere, all right? The reason it flows uh, clockwise and counterclockwise is because of the Coriolis effect. I won't get into that, but what you need to know is low pressure is lifting air high pressure is sinking air, okay? Just like when you apply high pressure to a basketball to force the air out of it, you're applying pressure, you're pushing down on it, it's sinking, and you've got high pressure. You're compressing the molecules in that volume of air. Low pressure, on the other hand, we're, we're lifting, we're, we're, we're stretching it out, we're getting more volume for the amount of molecules that are in the air, and that's why we tend to see a little bit worse weather associated with low pressure than we do with high pressure. Sinking air creates a stable atmosphere. Lifting air allows moisture to lift off of the surface, form clouds, form rain, form thunderstorms, all of that.